Uh, this is often considered to be the most challenging song in the book, <laughs> the fake book or jazz period. Uh, we'll kind of talk about why. Hey Alex, welcome back. Um, and Tom, thanks for joining in. So we're gonna just kind of maybe analyze it, talk about some of the basics of the harmonic movement. Maybe the influence from Have You Met Miss Jones? You probably, many of you have heard um, that Coltrane supposedly was uh, really inspired by the Rogers and Hart tune, Have You Met Miss Jones? So we'll look at that progression as well. It's a great jazz standard if you don't know that one. Um, beautiful standard, but it's the B section that he's in, he was inspired by as far as writing his tune, Giant Steps, and conceiving the whole Coltrane changes concept of the major third interval, uh, the chromatic medium. So we'll talk about that in a second too, but I'm just wanting to see who else is joining in today. This gives me a good idea of, of how popular this topic is and such like that. So type in the chat if you're here. I'm appreciating you spending a, some time with me. This is just going to be a, a introduction lesson to Giant Steps. We're not going to learn his solo or anything too crazy. But I'll definitely talk about like why I think this is an important tune to work on, even if you don't play the style of jazz, but if you're just a jazz guitar player in general, wanting to get better and improve, you know, it's it's good for your analysis skills, it's good for your modal playing, it's good to work in two five licks, it's good for triad, good for fretboard and how to conceive and memorize songs. So I think it's there's a lot of different levels that I'm going to talk about here. So grab your guitar too, because I'm going to be demonstrating some things that I would love for you to try. Um, so yeah, well, let's go ahead and get started. I was just trying to see if anyone else is going to tune in here. Um, so Giant Steps, written by John Coltrane from his album, Giant Steps. <laughs> um, I believe it was 1959. Uh, it was pretty groundbreaking. Um, very, very, very challenging tune, as you all probably know about or have seen other YouTube videos, people shredding on it and all that stuff. And we're going to just mainly take it nice and easy and talk about, um, I'm looking at it here. By the way, grab the tabs in the description. It's my own lead sheet for guitar, so it has the melody on there too, um, in tabs. We're going to just analyze it and talk about the key centers that, you know, this is what's interesting is to know, like, why, what makes a song so hard, so challenging? And it's pretty much two things. The rate of chord change <laughs> in, the, in the three keys that it's changing from at a rapid pace. So we're, if you look at my lead sheet um, or this fake, if you have the fake book, many of you probably have the, the real book. Okay, I'm just gonna hold that up. We'll, we'll analyze it right now. And we want to play the chords, so I'll kind of just demonstrate a couple things, maybe a chord melody, uh, like I was playing, and then just for comping. Okay, just basic, what I call the grip shapes on how to play it. Maybe a little bass line. style comping. It's really fun, again, for just general practicing. So just to work on your musicianship skills, your comping, um, some two fives, getting us away from the stock one, six, two, five that we're probably used to more in the earlier songs from the 20s and 30s. So this is definitely very challenging. Yukon, welcome. So it starts off, there's three key centers, okay? There's three key centers. And the, the thing to remember about this is that there's three key centers and he's modulating major thirds apart, okay? So it basically creates an augmented triad. So if you put your finger here on B, on the second fret on the fifth string, and then you go to a major third higher, which is four frets, two whole steps, that's the next key. So he's in the key of B, key of E flat, and then you go up four frets, a 
major third, okay, that's G. Now, if you go up a major third from G, you're back to B. So that the, the, the augmented triad divides that chromatic scale up, okay? It's, so there's only three augmented triads. There's four total, but if you were to think of it that way, but that's not what he's doing. He's not playing augmented triads. So, uh, the augmented triad is the overall picture of his modulation scheme. So just do this with me. B major, slide it up four frets to E flat major, slide it up four frets to G major, and slide it up to back to B major. Those are the three keys that he's using for this song. And they're not related in the sense that they're not relative or parallel major from each other. So that's where it can get a little bit tricky for soloing. You can't just use one pentatonic scale and you know play diatonically through the changes. You actually have to navigate the changes. And that's where the fun in the game begins on soloing on giant steps. It's how do I navigate these chord changes? I can't just play my pentatonic blues licks like I could on a one, six, two, five type of a song. So, um, but let's go in and talk about this modulation scheme because there's two modulation schemes that you want to get down uh, that will lead you to those chromatic median chord relationships. Again, either major third up or major third down. They're just gonna <laughs> equal themselves out. Okay, so if you start on B, what he's doing, he's going to the D7 immediately to the key of G major. That's his first way to get there. So basically, what he, what he omits is a two, but he'll throw that in. So don't worry, you'll get the two, five, one. But from the beginning, he goes D, B major seven to the D7, G major seven. And then now we want to get to the E flat, which is again, the major third below. He puts a five chord. I'm playing it as a 13th chord here to the E flat major. So that's the opening phrase when he goes. The chords are this. And again, you want to get these chord shapes down. I'm just using some really basic chords. These are chords I always label as grip chords. B major seven, D seven. G major 7, B flat 13 for fun, E flat major 7, you could do 6, 9 if you want, and if, as long as it's major, you could do major 9. Okay, so even right there, that's a great start. Just practicing. And just getting the, the chord shapes and getting the feel down for this movement. But what's important is this root movement, B, D, G, B flat, and E flat, okay? So, and that's major seven, dominant seven, major seven, dominant seven, major seven. So one thing that he does in his soloing is play these major cells, melodic cells, one, two, three, five one of those chords. And then he does it again. So it, that's a definitely a popular pattern and I have that outlined in my etudes if you're interested in mastering those melodic cells, the one, two, three, five pattern that Coltrane uses in his own solo so much. He was really using that quite a bit. Um, he was big on melodic patterns. Uh, Nicholas Slanimsky, Nikolai Slanimsky was, a, he wrote a book, kind of a music theorist, uh, Scales, Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns. In that book, uh, apparently Coltrane was working out of a huge, thick book of patterns and intervallic, you know, cool stuff that, <laughs> that, that, um, that would take a lifetime to learn. But that really influenced Coltrane in thinking about uh, patterns and intervallic ideas. So, um, we're not going to get into some soloing quite yet, but let's get these chords down. Again, that's a pretty challenging progression to get down, but this will lay the foundation on the modulation scheme right there. Because we have the three keys. We have the B major, we have the G major, and we have the E flat major. 
and then now it does 251. So this is where the, the trick of memorizing and how this can benefit you is by really learning your intervals. So if we're on E flat major, from E flat, you wanna go tritone, and you're gonna to go to A minor, D7, G. So from that E flat again, use the tritone concept, and that's gonna now do a two five, and that's gonna lead you to the G major. So you wanna, there's two patterns here, two schemes that you wanna do once you're on that major chord, and we'll practice it a little bit more. We'll also look at How Do You Met Miss Jones, because that's what's going on in that song. And that's the influence apparently for Giant Steps for John Coltrane. Once you're on a major chord, you could either go a whole step down and do a two five. That leads you, well, down <laughs> to the major and major third below to B major. Or you could go to the tritone from that root, and that will lead you to the other major third up in this case, but obviously I'm going down. But it's easy once you're here to go two five one. And then once you're on G, go tritone, two, five, one. And then once you're on that B, go tritone, two, five, one. So that's gonna be an important aspect of why this can open up some new ideas for you. Cause you start to really think about these relationships, the tritone and how it relates to the guitar, pattern, intervals and all that stuff. So if it's new for you, this will, this will be a really beautiful lifelong study that I hope will open up some new ideas for you. Um, so again, the progression so far, we can do it as a bossa nova. Same pattern. Okay, just, it's a little game. It's just, um, it's a matrix. So we have that now. So now we're on measure, we just got to B major. We're now gonna hit that two five. So we have the first eight bars down. Now you can see why this song is so called, you know, the hardest song in jazz because of all those chord changes that are unrelated that you have to navigate, you know? E flat, tritone. And then this pattern, he takes out the two five. These are the quick changes. And that's where it's ideal for you to get those melodic cells. Then it's easy, two fives. Two five. Two five. I say two five one, but now it's just we're going in that tritone pattern that I was mentioning, and then and then he doesn't do it here at the very end. Then it's back to top. Okay, practice walking bass lines. Chris, uh, welcome. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it today. Yeah, folks, type in the chat. Don't forget to do this if you like these live streams. That helps me kind of gauge. Uh, who's enjoying these and and uh, you know content and uh, how often you like for me to do these? If I get a lot of folks interested, I'm happy to do them um, every day, <laughs> all day long. So tell your friends, tell your tell your family, tell grandma. Uh, the melody too. There's a lot of good stuff to talk about. With the melody. major seven then it does that like to the minor and there's different ways to think about it then it does another major seven to that minor so there's different ways to think about how you you know but he's kind of thinking a, a big picture but how you conceive it I'm, I'm i'm thinking of it as this arpeggio and this arpeggio <laughs> and then these two fives with the nine a lot of beautiful color the nines uh, the title, Giant Steps, um, that's a good question. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to uh, go back in time and ask John Coltrane. Maybe he talks about it. Um, maybe there's a, that's something you can type in the um, on Google. But that's a wonderful question. I call this baby steps. I like to just break it down into really small chunks. That's why if it's new for you, I would just recommend that you do this all day long today. Just that much. Now I'm kind of just having fun with the chord. 
this. Doing that chord, what I call chord exploring. Let's see. Now try just trying to figure out some new ways of playing the first uh, two bars. That was just two bars, but it's so dense. There's so much chords. Hey, that's cool. Mimic, are you part of my Patreon community? I haven't seen your name before, but thanks for chiming in. On the, we're talking about where does the title Giant Steps come from? What inspired him? Um, I don't think it has anything to do with Have You Met Miss Jones. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at Have You Met Miss Jones for fun. But we'll, we'll go back and play more. So um, here's Have You Met Miss Jones. It's all in, in the, old, the old real book here. Um, Have You Met Miss Jones? I'm going to do the second time. Actually, the first time. It's not there yet. Right here. Happy Minutes Jones modulates to the four chord. It's just one, six, two, five for the A section. Super great standard to know. But now it goes to B flat major, the four of the key of F. Then it goes down a whole step, two, five, one. And that leaves you a major third below. And then from there it goes down a whole step. You got it, two, five, one, which leads you a whole step below. And then what does it do there? From D major, now it does the tritone to get us back to G flat major. So again, those are the two modulation techniques to lead you to those major thirds, the augmented triad that Coltrane uses in giant steps. And that's why it's related and inspired Coltrane to modulate using those major thirds because it's right here. And then it goes up half step two five, last A. Great tune if you haven't learned it. stream on that song. I just recently started a mega lesson on Patreon, which by the way, I'm uh, pumping my Patreon page for a second. If you're not a part of my community, please join Patreon. It's free. There are two other tiers available. The silver tier gets you all of my tabs and all of my PDFs and all of my sales size practice videos at the silver tier. The platinum tier gets you access to all of my videos, everything including behind the scenes, including my workshops. And then the diamond tier is a private lesson with me uh, each month, but that's sold out. So I'm sorry, uh, there's no diamond tier available left. Uh, but if you wanna email me if you're interested in, in studying with me, let me know and I can fit you in my schedule. Um, so back to this, and that's Patreon again. Yeah, please consider joining me on Patreon. Again, there is a free tier that I post things like this, lead sheet, and just other things too that are on my mind. So let's go back to giant steps and start to get some practice things down for it. So again, here are the chords. That's the first, and then E flat, tritone, two five. And then now, that same pattern. And then we're in the key of B major. There's three keys that he's modulating around. Two five. E flat major. Tritone. Two five. G major. Tritone. B major. Tritone. E flat major. And then he goes. And that was the whole step down from there and then back. You can have so much fun just comping. It's 
circular. <laughs> it's just kind of fun to just get in that zone. It's fun to do a chord melody. It's pretty easy to work one out. Just because it's just all patterns. We can even walk a bass line. So check out my um, chord melody arrangement if you want to grab it. It's on Patreon. There's a link in the description. If you don't want to join Patreon, you can also just purchase these my Giant Steps package, which also contains these etudes, three etudes. I haven't released the third etude yet on Patreon, but that'll be out today. <laughs> if you guys are Patreon members, you're like, hey, where's my third etude? It's not released, but I'll, re I'll release the sound slice and the um, PDF soon. Any questions, how you guys doing on it? Is this challenging? I'm gonna try to break it down again a little bit more, but just remember this, three things. There's three key centers and it outlines an augmented triad. And that means one, three, sharp, five. Okay, that's very important, one, three, sharp, five. And specifically in this case, B, E flat, and G. Of course, E flat can be thought of as D sharp, but E, B, E flat, and G. Okay, those are the three key centers, the major key centers. From there, you have two fives. So that's why it's important that you practice those two five, two five, two five one. And that's where you can also practice your two five one licks and applications, soloing ideas. So it really does make a fabulous study on many levels, navigating changes, quick changes, two five one ideas. And so with this major third concept, also called the chromatic median relationship that he was fascinated by, think about those two modulation schemes, okay? Because we're dividing up that chromatic scale. So think about the two modulation schemes that allow us to modulate either up a major third or down a major third. The trick is this, if you wanna modulate down a major third from the chord you're on, I'm gonna choose E flat for this demonstration. Go down a whole step and do a two, five, one. That leads you down a major third. So E flat major seven, go down a whole step, two, five, one. Now we're in the key of B major. So you don't even have to think about it. It's easier just to do it versus thinking too much about it. Here's E flat major. Now if we want to go up to G major, major third, go to the tritone. Bam, now you modulated to G major. So that's the secret to modulating these major third intervals. Okay, you have two modulation schemes. From the one chord, the major seven, you go down a whole step and you do a two five chain and do a two five one. That'll lead you down a whole, two whole steps, a major third. If you want to modulate up a major third from the one chord that you're on, you go to the tritone and then you begin your two, five, one sequence. So let's do that again on just playing E flat major seven chord with me. So now say we want to modulate to the key of B major, which is the major third below. We're gonna go down a whole step from E flat major, do two, five, and a one. And now we're in the key of B major, okay? So now let's say we're in B major, then we want to modulate up to E flat major, then we gotta to go to the tritone. Do a two, five, one, so it works both ways. And that's essentially what Coltrane is doing when you see these two, five, ones. He's just modulating between these three key centers. So that's the beauty of it. Um, so again, grab my lead sheet, learn the basic melody. Thank you. 
And this is basically my etude. Um, working in those melodic cells, these two five. These two five one phrases and licks that will help you navigate these changes. And it's fine to learn the important um, phrases again, the one, two, three, five melodic cell. Because remember, the first one, two, three, four, five chords are either major or dominant. And again, that could be major six, nine, could be major seven, it could be major nine. And then the D7 could be D7, D13, D9, doesn't matter. But what you can play as a soloist is one, two, three, five. That's called a melodic cell, a digit pattern. So on B, you have B, C sharp, D sharp, and F sharp. This is such a beautiful sound to, to use in your soloing. So do this with me. It's actually kind of a, often used as a melody that you might even recognize, like the beginning opening theme of Out of Nowhere. You came to me from out of nowhere. Isn't that pretty? That's just the melodic cell, one, two, three, five of your start note, okay? But it could be used in many different ways. It's also used um, in Begin the Begin by Cole Porter. So uh, it's just a beautiful melodic tool for us to use as an improviser instead of just a triad. Which is beautiful too, but this gives us four notes. So it becomes a pattern that you can use for your soloing. Um, I use it a lot in swing music, believe it or not. <laughs> I use it a lot in, in gypsy jazz. Uh, Tom, that's a good question. I'm doing face value except for the A minor to D7, and this is all in my etude. You're a Patreon member, so you actually have uh, access to my etudes. I've got three etudes, well, two that are on Patreon, um, three that you can that are in the description if you want to if you're not on patreon and you want to get it um, but I'll, I'll put the third etude out today um, and this will help you master these because I use it all over the place because Coltrane did in his solo and you know you learn from the masters and the greats by emulating and taking their ideas and building off of it so to answer Tom's question oh hey Yukon I'm gonna look at you too Yukon says, can I assume he has some studies of tritones on Patreon? Oh, absolutely. Tritone is essential. This. Tritone is, is half of the chromatic scale. For guitar players, here's an octave. It literally is right in the middle. So you want to do this. Octave. And here's tritone. Tritone. I'm often talking about tritone substitution, but in this case, I'm just talking about tritone interval and to locate it quickly. So here's a G major seven chord. If you go to the tritone, that's where you begin your two, five, one sequence. And now you're in the key of B major. So from G major, if you go to the tritone, which is right here, C sharp, you can play minor seven and you do a two, five, F sharp seven, B major 7. From B major 7, if you go to the tritone, tritone, it's good to sing it. 2, 5, 1. From E flat, and that leads you to E flat major 7. So that's what I'm saying. These are the these are the patterns that he was using. And then from E flat, tritone. So it becomes this little game, this circular game. It's like, uh, you know, a matrix that they call it. So the culture matrix that just kind of leads you back and forth to these tritone ways. Now I'm going to get back. So that's the study. That's the importance of tritone relationship in terms of giant steps as a modulation scheme. So now I want to talk more about melodic cells. There's many. You can come up with your own melodic cells. The most popular is one, two, three, five. As I just demonstrated, it's used in the tune. Out of nowhere, it's used in begin to begin. Other other melodies use it as well. So one, two, three, five. Let's do this again, you guys. Start on B with me, and I'm just going to show you my quick fingering. And that's thinking this triad. This is how I think about it. 
you have B, D sharp, and F sharp. That's the major triad. Now, instead of just going one, three, five, which is just a triad, we're gonna add the two. It's so pretty, just that one, two, three, five. These are digit patterns. One, two, three, five. Okay, face value. So play that B major seven chord. And now play this. Now, play the D7 chord and do the same melodic cell. One, two, three, five. Why does that work? Because the first one is major seven and the other chord is dominant seven. One, two, three, five does not discriminate. One, two, three, five does not have a seven. Doesn't even have a six. One, two, three, five can work for major or for dominant. I'm gonna show you how it can work on a minor chord. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second without altering anything except for your thinking. Now G major, you guessed it, one, two, three, five. B flat major, one, two, three, five. E flat major, yep. So here's that opening of my A2 number one. Okay, one, two, three, five. It becomes these digit patterns. And yes, you wanna work these out everywhere. So now let me give you an example. And grab my etude, you guys. I know many of you, most of you are on Patreon already, uh, so I don't need to promote it, but um, I have three etudes for giant steps. Now let's talk about how you could use it on a minor chord. Play A minor seven. On A minor seven, go to the relative, which is C. So again, this is me always saying how important it is if I say A minor seven, you say C six. We'll play this, one, three, one, two, three, five. That's off of C, right here. On A minor seven. You might say, ooh, that's in the pentatonic. It is. A minor seven, C six are the same, you know, same chord, same four notes. But in this case, one, two, three, five. Now for the D7, one go up a whole step and do one, two, three, five. Face value, I call that. So now you just navigate it at two, five. Now we gotta go to G major and it's one, two, three, five. So now we just did a two, five, one, two, five, one, using the melodic cell concept. Is that sweet? Two, five, one. You can just blaze through that if you want to. Two, five, one. You can go up, you can go down it. So that's again using the melodic cell method. In this case, I'm using the super popular one, two, three, five, navigating these changes. And then I would continue through the changes. And then we can do all this stuff. We can run modes, we can run triad embellishments. This is just to me now the fun, the game. Then the game kind of begins. I'm like, oh, I could just think triads, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. Then I, we could think modes. That's what we're gonna talk about next. Are you guys hanging with me today? Are you having fun? Whether or not you ever play giant steps on a gig <laughs> is another story. But to have it on your music stand as a study, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend having it there, you know, spending time away from your standards, all of me and, and you know, sweet Georgia Brown and whatever, and take a look at Giant Steps, spend 10 minutes a day on it. It'll open up new ideas, I promise you. I hope I'm opening up some new ideas for you right now on what I've learned just by studying it, even though I don't play this song. I played it last night on my gig, but I played it as a bossa nova. <laughs> I went like this. I even did some tritone stuff like that. Again, you can do it. It's a beautiful tune. The melody. It's very 
catchy. Coltrane was brilliant with this. It's really brilliant. So don't be afraid of giant steps. Take it in baby steps. Learn the basic chords, learn the melody. Study these two modulation schemes I'm talking about using the whole step below method and the tritone above method to modulate either respectively whole step, two whole steps down, major third, or two whole steps above, major third, using the tritone. Again, that's called the chromatic mediant relationship, kind of a classical terminology. But a lot of composers are finding new ways to modulate new schemes, that is. So it's really beautiful in that sense. Um, but now I'm kind of talking about some general improvisation ideas. One of my favorite techniques, as many of you know who are on Patreon, is triads. Triads are the essentials, the essentials. So, um, you know, we just talked about melodic sales, but now if you take a triad version of giant steps, you go B major, D major, G major, um, B flat major, <laughs> E flat major. So again, this is now just thinking, oh, triad inversions to work these shapes. A minor, D, E to C, or you can do C major. That'd be cool. You turn everything into major. Two five ones. So again, now I'm thinking just working my triad inversions. could be especially if you're working out and I have a triad worksheet triad study number one and I'm just I go through all of that stuff that I'm just demonstrating right now so again explore that with triads you got melodic cells the other thing is just outlining arpeggios that's kind of the given face value uh, there's a couple other ideas I won't take up all your day today because we can make we can do this all day long obviously uh, but the other idea is modes to navigate the three key centers, and I'll, I'll just kind of get you started on this concept. If you think about the three C key centers we have for this song, we have B major, G major, and E flat major. Remember, those are all a major third apart, and they're not related in that sense. There's common tones. I mean, that's part of the beauty of this, but there's not they're not related. In that. So there's B Ionian. Now for the G major, we want to be able to switch. Now for the E flat major. Back to B major, G major, E flat major, B major. So now I'm just demonstrating modulating three key centers staying in one position. I call this the modal interchange. This is not modal jazz like Miles Davis, so what? It's not that. This is using the modes for us guitar players as position markers. So B major Ionian is for the B major key, and that includes a 2-5. But when we go to the key of E flat major, I think C Aeolian, because that's the relative minor, and it's right there in position. There is no B natural in the key of E flat, so you have to go to the note above it, which could be C, or below it, which would be B flat, and that would be Mixolydian. So I'm relating, the, I use the modes as relationships to the general key center. So that allows me to switch quickly without having to move my hand and move my position. So I'm in the key of B, key of E flat. Now the key of G. Those are the three key centers. So that's in the key of G, B is Phrygian. Back to Ionian for the B major. E flat. So you can practice going back and forth these three key centers by just choosing one position. I chose B, but remember B Ionian, C Aeolian, B Phrygian. But so remember that that um, E flat does not have a B natural, so that's why I went to C. And again, you, you don't have to stop there. You might say, oh, I'm gonna try it down here on G sharp. So G sharp Aeolian is for the key of B. Now for the key of G is G Ionian. The key of E flat is G Phrygian. So again, that allows me to switch these three key centers, staying in one position by relating the modes, staying on one root note. And if that root note is not a common tone between the key centers, 
then you gotta go up a half step, or down a half step, and then it will be, I promise. So again, think about that. That's the modal interchange concept as applied to the guitar. So I hope that helps Tom and all of you. Um, yeah, there's more. There's a lot more stuff we can do with this, but we're just scratching the surface right now. You know, there's this, such a fun song. So I'll leave it at that. Um, the other aspect I was gonna say is the use of pentatonic scales. But now we're getting a little bit more into modern style of jazz playing too. And then of course we can sub out things and do sus chords. We could do alter dominance and melodic minor and diminish half whole. But I don't want to bore you guys. I want you guys to enjoy the lovely day today. So thank you so much for joining me. Please join my online music community on Patreon. It's such a great, wonderful community of all you guys uh, already. I know many of you. There's different tier levels you can join at if you want my PDFs and tabs and sound slice practice videos. Join at the silver tier. You get access to everything. If you want my videos, join at the platinum tier. You get access to all of the videos and all of the PDFs, tabs, and sound slice. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Have a lovely day. Cheers.